Hey everyone, Pastor Steph here. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Pam. All the hey. way in New Hampshire. Yeah, so it's a little different right now uh, because as we're recording this, um, Pam is with the kiddos and they are in New Hampshire. Yes. And so we are Zooming our five minute intro today. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Th like hey. Zooming. So uh, Pam and I were talking this week and she said she was listening to, well, Kids Place Live because we got kids. Kids Place Live. And yeah, well, because talking I'm about, with the kids. Sorry. Talking about Oreos. And so apparently <laughs> Oreo has this new thing, which is really funny. It's um, really funny. So it says Oreos is helping their customers um, protect their coveted cookies. Because okay, mom so said- Specifically parents, adults with kids, stuff like that. Or you're hiding uh, the cookies from or, your wife because you're supposed to be yeah. on the diet and she doesn't exactly. need them. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, they're trying to help us out. So they, they actually, yep. you know, you guys, you know, if you have kids or had kids or you have a wife or a husband who are on a health kick and trying to get rid of your coveted <laughs> cookies, um, you have to hide them in places, you know? And so yep. we all have stories, you know, you like empty a tin of something else and put them cookies in there or whatever, or put yes. them on a high shelf and hope your kids don't find it. Well, exactly. Oreo is making it easier with, they call it their um, protection plan. And Oreo so, protection plan. Oreo yep. protection plan. And so they're having limited uh, edition, <laughs> they have camouflage packs of their, uh, I guess their Oreo of the thins. And so they are designed to resemble everyday objects. Yeah, you know, stuff like um, car, a car manual. Uh, they have actually designed as a pack of underwear and a book cover, <laughs> stuff like that. So, so it's like uh, they're camouflage cookies. So wait a minute, I guess I should have asked you this before. So are they keeping their Oreos in their car for the car manual? Are they keeping their Oreos in their underwear drawer? Like that's what I'm trying I to figure out. I, I, I guess you could. I don't know if I recommend, recommend the car because- Yeah, I wouldn't you know, either. But it's more like kid repellent packaging, I guess. So they yeah. can, you have a car manual, you know, put it with your other books or something like that. Or Yeah, so like one of the ladies that called in was actually, um, she broke, she put her cookies in, a, in the freezer inside a package of cauliflower pizza dough. Whoa. So like Dance. totally, yeah. Like, so what kid is gonna be like, hmm, I wish I had cauliflower pizza dough and then open it and like, boom, there's cookies inside. You know, so like that's not- So we wanna know, have happen. you ever hidden your, some food, specific cookies, foods, candies, from the kids or yeah. from the spouse? Or for yourself. <laughs> drop the deep in the comments. We, we wanna hear, spill the beans. And yes. where is, okay? We're not gonna go in your house and start looking for it. Uh, where is, we wanna know, where where did you hide it? All well, right. and now, the only- now the thing is if you tell us we're gonna know and they're gonna know so i don't know do you want to tell us do you not i mean i don't know so that's up to you all right that's we'll up to you. there but you know this or is maybe you about being honest so right now so we would yep. love to hear from you pam have you ever yep. been food from anybody from me I'm uh, your yeah probably yes. oh, I've but i don't really but see, oh, I, I don't I've, really... I've left, I've left, there's certain chips that I love that I know the kids love that I've bought for me and I've left them in my car. Well, that, yes, I know that. Behind my, they're behind my passenger seat so I can reach them when I'm driving and then I can put them back there so the kids don't ever know. Until one day, I think it was probably Sebastian, he was in the car and he goes in everywhere. He's like, <laughs> Dad, what's this? I'm like, for the back, it's trash, it's nothing, it's nothing, yeah. Trash. I, I don't forget. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't really think of, I don't know. I don't really, first of all, our kids don't really steal food from us, whatever, so whatever. And they I don't, don't it's really, not that they're stealing from us, it's that when they see us have it, oh, can I that's have true. some? You're right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess you're right, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, Plus, so, I don't really, like, yeah. Okay, very cool. So we'll love to drop in the comments, come on. We so know yeah, so you. where do you guys keep your food? We put it, we hide it. Have you done Yeah, it or maybe we need to give us some pointers because Listen, maybe we... I'm a pastor. So it's like you're going yep. to the priest right now and you're just bringing it out. <laughs> and it's, it's between you and me and, and everybody else that's watching. And everybody else listening today. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So. so think of some good places. So underwear drawer, uh, car, freezer. We don't know. Right here, drop it in. Hey, uh, listen, next week is Bagel Fest, August 8th. Bagel Woo Festival. So excited for that. And so we still desperately need it. Uh, I'm serious. Like, we really 
don't have very many volunteers signed up yet for next week. Maybe you're thinking you're planning volunteering and you haven't let us know. Please let us know. Yes. We need volunteers desperately. One of our biggest events we give yes. back to the community. Um, and so Bagel Fest is back. So it's happening next Sunday, August 8th. Come on, let us know you can about helping out at research.tv slash bagel. Please let me know. Uh, we need it. And um, so we're excited to serve our community, yes. but can't do it without you. And nope. so we got bounce houses. We're giving out stuff. We, we're just loving on our community. And so we, yeah, we to totally, out. yeah. We need to get out there. Sunday, it's a great day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We so totally we need to get out there and just, you know, get all we got. I, I really feel like this bagel fest will be awesome this year. Just yeah. post COVID. Okay. I think people want to get out there and just really, uh, yeah, I think it's a great time, a great day to do it. So we need you guys. All right. So reach yourself slash bagel, sign up, let us know. Enjoy this worship with us. Continue your series. Yep. Good vibes. Let us know in the comments. Where do you hide your stuff? We want to know. Where do you All hide right. your stuff? God <laughs> bless you guys. So, Bye guys. I'm gonna get some cookies. <laughs>here online at Restoration Church. We exist to lead people to become fully engaged followers of Jesus. And if you're joining us for the first time, we're honored that you're here with us. We would love to connect with you at rechurch.tv connect. We also wanna thank you for your continued generosity here at Restoration, where we live to give. The easiest way you can give is by going to rechurch.tv give or text GIVE to 845-209-1313. To get more information on how you can take your next steps here at Restoration, simply visit us at rechurch.tv. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope that this message today will give you the peace and encouragement you need.
Hey, what's up everybody? Pastor Seth here as we continue our series, Good Vibes. Throughout the summer, we've been going through the book of Proverbs, looking at the wisdom that God has for you and I today. And when we follow what God has for us, literally, we can experience joy and peace, aka good vibes in our life by just simply being faithful to the God uh, that created us. And so throughout this series, we've been looking at different topics that we find in the book of Proverbs, certain recurring themes that kind of happen over and over various chapters throughout. And we'll be looking at one today uh, that uh, some of us are going to struggle with a little bit. Um, we, we struggle with the idea, we struggle when it happens to us, and we struggle uh, to, to do it unto others, but honestly, it's one of those things that uh, we are called to do, and, and at times, we're, it's going to be happening to us. And what I am talking about today is the word discipline, the idea of discipline, and when I, as soon as I say that, some of you have probably certain thoughts of discipline, maybe the way you were disciplined when you are younger. Um, you know, and so you think maybe to you discipline is a bad term. It's, it's, it brings bad thoughts. It's not good vibes. The opposite brings bad vibes in your life. Uh, maybe some of you, uh, like myself, uh, where I had parents who disciplined me, but they disciplined in a godly way. And therefore, I'm not resentful of the discipline. In fact, I've grown to love and appreciate their discipline. And, um, you know, and even though in the times of discipline, they used to say the phrase, you know what, this hurts me, that it hurts you. I didn't believe it then, but as a parent, I truly believe it now. Uh, when I have to discipline my kids, and I do it because I love my kids, and I want the best for my kids, and at times, we are going to be disciplined by our loving Father, God Himself, because He loves us, because we are His kids, and He, and he wants to discipline us in a way to do what is right, so we can live the best life possible. And so I just want to talk this idea of, of bringing balance in our life. I believe discipline, true godly discipline, um, brings balance, good balance within our life. There is the extremes, um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. There's extremes of discipline where we kind of just do it out of anger, and, or we just do it, I know, kind of we react to something. And so th those are not godly ways. Um, actually, the book of Proverbs and throughout the scriptures gives us godly ways of how we're to receive discipline from God himself, and how we're to discipline those that uh, God has placed in our life, that we have maybe authority over and, and, and a leadership capacity. If you're a parent watching this, I'm going to give you some, some tips today of to discipline our kids in a godly way. And on uh, receiving it, how to accept the discipline in your life. If you're a kid watching this, how to accept that discipline has been uh, brought upon you or from God himself, right, as Christians, as followers of Jesus. And so let's dive into this today, this idea of bringing balance. And so I want to kind of start off with the illustration. Uh, when I think of balance and thinking of discipline, I, I was thinking of a phrase, and it's really this, the phrase is called, right the ship. Are you familiar with that phrase, riding the ship? Well, basically, what it is, it's, it's taken from, that's right, from a boat itself. And the sailors used to talk about right the ship. Um, and because what would happen is when you're on that seas and, and, you know, when you're traveling in the water, if your ship got imbalanced, or what the phrase would be used is called listing, Okay, if your your ship was listing, it could be listing to the left, it could be listing to the right, because there's an imbalance. So maybe it's imbalance of cargo, uh, uh, people, or uh, whatever it may be. And so there's something that's causing the ship to to not be balanced. And obviously, if you're on water and 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 your and your boat is 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 tilting one direction or the other, um, that's never really a good sign. And especially if the waves and you know start picking up and maybe getting caught in the storm. Storm, you want to bring balance to that boat as much as possible. You want to be, you know, again, you want to be sturdy on the waters. And so in our own life, if we're not careful, we don't have balance, you know, we can be easily turned veer to the left or veer to the right. And once we get in those positions in our life, it doesn't take much for us to topple over. So what God is going to be doing, what we're going to be talking about today, is He wants to bring balance in our lives. He wants, he wants to right the ship. Say that with me today. Right the ship. Okay, he wants to right the ship within our lives today. And so when there's, ba when there's balance, you know, it keeps us from listing, from, 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 from being able to veer off the path that God has for us. And so this is hard for us to accept, 
but we should learn to be grateful because God's looking out for our best interests. He wants what's best. He wants us to keep on on a path. He wants us to continue to move forward. He wants us to experience the good vibes, the joy, the peace that comes from serving and living for Him. And so at times, we do need to be disciplined. At times, you know, we're going to have to discipline our, 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 our children. At times, we ourselves may be disciplined. Maybe at work, and there's a scenario taking place and you did something you weren't supposed to do. Well, there's a disciplinary process that takes place. Why? Because they're looking to right the ship in your life. They, they want to see you succeed. You want to see your kids succeed. You know, and so we're going to learn today on learning to right the ship. All right, so keep us from, from listing left to the right, finding the balance that God has for us. So let's look at this. In Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, we start seeing this idea of riding the ship. And it says, My son, do not despise the Lord, Lord's discipline or be wary of his reproof. It says, For the Lord reproves him who he loves. He says, As a father, the son in whom he delights. Blessed is the one, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. It says, for the, the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are always ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. It says, those who hold her fast are called blessed. So we're going to be talking about riding the ship today. Riding that ship. You know, bringing balance into our life. The purpose of God's discipline is not to punish us, but, but to right the ship. To bring the balance within our lives. And so, so we have to understand that. It's, and we just to seek that. And understanding that when we are being disciplined, all right, when God disciplines us, it's not because, oh, you know, he's upset with us. He doesn't like us anymore. He's, it's contrary to that. It's on the flip side is he actually loves you unconditionally and he wants what's best for you. So in that process, he's riding the ship. You know, again, if you have children, you understand this. You know, again, we're imperfect. So sometimes we, you know, we, 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 we react out of action, out of our human nature. But when, we, when it comes to the long run and when we think about our discipline, we want our kids to do what's best for them and for their health and their well-being. You know, when your child is running across that street and a car's coming and your reaction is to yell and say, don't do that. Okay, you're not trying to hinder their growth. You're trying to keep them alive so they can continue to grow, right? We're riding the ship. We're bringing balance into lives. And God often is doing that to us. Uh, God's, God's discipline has nothing to do with rejection, but more to do with refinement. Some of you are, are, have looked at God's discipline in your life the wrong way. And you're like, God's rejected me. It has, has nothing to do with re rejection. It has to do with refinement. He's refining you. He's strengthening you. He's growing you. He's teaching you. He's leading you to become stronger than you've ever become before. And, and to grow closer in relationship with Him than you ever have. And, right? and so there's a disciplinary act that has to take place in our lives. Because of our sinful nature, because of our sins, uh, and, and God looks at us as a ship and he says, well, okay, you're kind of leaning to the left, you're kind of leaning to the right. And so he brings this balance in our lives through discipline to get us back to where we need to be. And so we have to look at this under, and that kind of come with that knowledge and understanding helps us have a different perspective of when things are taking place in our life. And so let's look at this, and, and the book of Proverbs has many, many, many verses about discipline. One we find in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. It says, people who accept discipline are on a pathway to life. So when we're accepting to, to discipline, we're actually on a pathway to living, all right, to life. But those who ignore correction will go astray. All right, so when we don't listen, that's when we're going to go straight. So we're those who are open to discipline are on a pathway to life. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1 says this. It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. All right, and that's coming from the Bible, okay? And you know, whoever hates correction is stupid. And can I tell you this today? Don't 
be stupid. Come on, let's be wise. Let's don't be er arrogant or ignorant to what God has for us. All right, don't be stupid in this. Let's be open and accepting to, to the discipline that God has for us so we can obtain the knowledge that's there and, and waiting for us. And so whatever you're going through or uh, have gone through or will be going through, um, when it is a, it's an act of discipline from God, it, what he's doing is to right the ship in your life. And so when he's doing that in your life, he, he wants you to find that balance. Okay, He's looking for you to be successful, to live a blessed life, to, 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 have, to, to experience his love. And so if he didn't discipline us, then really it, he's, he wouldn't be loving us. Because if he just lets us do whatever we want and get to whatever trouble we, you know, that, and, and, and whatever, that's not love at all. You know, if I never discipline my kids and let them do whatever they want, it's not truly loving them because if, if I truly love them, I'm going to do and, and minister discipline and, and help correct so they can do the, make the right choices and, 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 you know, and live a long life, a blessed life and do the best they possibly can. Discipline is necessary. All right. Discipline is necessary. Not something we necessarily want, but it's necessary to truly live the life that's there for us. And, and so we need to understand that discipline is, is actually a blessing. You know, disciplinary uh, discipline is a blessing for us to, to experience. And so I understand that discipline is correction. It's driven by love. Discipline is correction is driven by love. So when we are being disciplined by God, it's corrected. It's for correction. It's for refinement, and it's driven by His love for us. When we discipline, you know, your mom and dad, you discipline your kids. You're doing so because you're. It's, it's correction, and you're. You, you you should be doing. It. Make sure it's driven by love. You know, if you are, you know, maybe you're a supervisor, maybe you got employees underneath you. Sometimes you have to do something that involves some sort of disciplinary action. You're doing so, okay? You're doing it because, you you know, you're doing it out of love for that employee. You're doing that because you want to do what's best for them and best for the company, you know, and, and follow the right. There's things, there's reasons why there's rules and things and stuff put in place, right? Discipline is correction driven by love. Proverbs 19, 18, it talks about this. It says, discipline your son, for that there is hope. It says, do not be uh, a willing party to his death. All right, discipline your son, discipline your kids as we are being disciplined so we can have hope, so your children can have hope. You know, when we sit aside and don't discipline, we're just, we're, we're, we're leading them on the road to destruction, on the road to death. All right, because we're not correcting what we see or, or if we're not allowing God to correct us, we're, we're on a pathway to destruction. And so God's trying to keep us off that pathway. And so I understand that discipline is correction, but it's driven by love. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 and 6, it says, You know, my son, do not make light of, of, of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves. Right? The Lord disciplines those he loves. Again, discipline is truly the correct godly discipline is an act of love. It, 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 it's it, discipline, godly discipline is, is a blessing, and we need to learn to accept that. Again, as much as we don't want to be disciplined, you have to understand that, you know, if we're going to be 100% honest, there's times that we need to be disciplined. And, and when God disciplines us, it's done out of love for us. And so, discipline itself is actually a blessing. Okay, and so we've got to perceive it as one, as a blessing. See, God's discipline isn't something done to you. Okay, think about it. It's, it's discipline done for you. Again, we think it all, you know, we, we take it personally. But it's not being done to us. It's nothing personal. He's doing it for us. He's on our side. Again, he wants what's best for us. And so the futures, the plans, the hope that he has for you, he wants you to experience the best life possible. And so discipline's done not to you, but it's actually done for you. He's in your corner. All right, he, he's not he's not in the opposite corner, you know, and, and going against you. He's in your corner. He's got your back. He's for you. He he's there for you. And and, and so he, he the discipline is 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 for you. If God is for you, who can be against you, right? And so I understand discipline is a blessing. It's done for you. See, because without balance, we're gonna sink. Okay, without balance, that boat, you know, right the ship, if it doesn't get righted, it's going to sink, it's going to topple over. And so what's going on, on on a ship like that, you know, the the, the the crew are going around and they're, they're, they're moving the cargo and whatever it is, and they're trying to balance everything out. 
you know, and so so it, it, God's trying to remove whatever needs to be removed in your life and, and, and you know, and put things in the right place because he doesn't want you to sink. He doesn't want you to, to fail. He wants you to experience the blessings that can only come from him. So he's looking to bring that balance to right the ship in your life. He, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12 says, For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as the Father corrects a child in whom he delights. So listen, God is looking to correct us and discipline us through his love. And so we need, as Christians, be learn to be open and accepting to that. And then on the flip side, if, if you're if you're if you're understanding this, um, that you're a mom and dad, especially you got younger kids in the house and you're trying to figure this all out, listen, discipline is is, is necessary. It's correction. Discipline is correction. It's balance, okay? Discipline it is correction and it, it, it's, it's truly an act of love. Godly discipline, okay? Godly discipline. And let me give you real quick just a, a viewpoint of God's discipline versus the world, okay? Because the world looks at discipline a little bit differently. Uh, one view of the world's discipline is uh, this kind of idea of lifeguard, you know, type type discipline. And and so really the lifeguard type discipline is, you know, often rescued from their consequences, you know, and so, so so this has happened so far often that we don't actually ever deal with consequences. We live in a world today where a lot of people have never dealt with certain consequences of their actions and it shows. All right. And so so lifeguard discipline is that idea. Oh, I don't want my baby to experience that. I get hurt. And I, I, I don't want to discipline my kids because I don't want them to, you know, not to, to trust me or not to like me. And so you're lifeguarding your, your kids and you're keeping them from from natural consequences that, that are laid out in an act of discipline. And the, the point and the, the, the true reality is, is if you discipline your kids now, the small stuff, you won't have to discipline later for the big stuff because they're going to learn from the small stuff not to do the big stuff. That's how it works. That's how discipline works. And so God's trying to keep us from maybe some of the smaller things that are disciplined so we don't have to go through the big pains in life, right? The big stuff. And so that's what a, 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 a warning and, and, and a tragedy of lifeguard discipline is it's often keeping people rescued from the consequences and then it's leading those people to do bigger things and experience more consequences that they would have never experienced in the first place if someone simply corrected them from the very beginning. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, don't be deceived. And it says, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. All right. Again, everything you do in the dark is going to be brought to the light eventually. Yeah, you might have been hiding it well for years and years or whatever at this point, right? But whatever's been done in the dark will come and be revealed in the light. So, so deal with God's discipline now and, and bring that to light now so then you can truly experience the, 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 the peace, the blessing, the joy is to be serving God now and, 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 and being rescued from, you know, from, from, from whatever that future you know, pain could be. All right, a man reaps what he sows. That is so true. Another real viewpoint on, on, on discipline often is this idea of etch a sketch discipline. Etch a sketch discipline. You're like, what? Etch a sketch discipline. And you ever have an etch a sketch? And you, you, you're drawing and you shake it and, and you know, it goes away. And you're drawing something else, you shake it, it goes away. Sometimes you shake it, it doesn't go all the way. You know, it's still there and you have to shake it harder. You know, and, and so, um, as a sketch is, you, you ever try to draw on it after you need to draw the same picture the next time? It's hard. Um, as a sketch are just, you know, it, it, they're hard to master in that way. And so an as a sketch type discipline is often this idea of inconsistent. And so there's this often this inconsistent discipline that's taking place and, you know, and, and, and maybe inconsistency between mom and dad. Mom and dad, you got to be on the same page. Can I tell you this right now? All right. You are not two different units in a family. You are one. Serve as one. All right. And, and in our house, whatever mom says, goes. You know, whatever dad says, goes. You know, it's not, you know, it's not a he said, she said. It's if mom said it, then that's what I said. And if my kids go to mom and, 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 and mom says dad said, that's what he said. You know, that's what he, she says as well. We, we're one. All right. Marriage is not one plus one is equals two. It's one plus one equals one. Okay, and so so let's not be inconsistent. And I know some of you are like, listen, I'm trying. You know, maybe my spouse. You're talking about your spouse. You think of them. They're not. not maybe they're not Christian. Maybe they're. They, you know, they have a different worldview on things or whatever. So that I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm telling you, inconsistent discipline is is, is tough on on our kids. It's tough on those around us. And and you're sending two different messages out there. And what we do in, in inconsistent um, discipline is we learn. This is the kicker. We, 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 it, it's a learned behavior. So we learn who we can get away with what. 
with inconsistent discipline, we learn who we can get away with, with what. All right. And so the, again, the Bible addresses the Proverbs chapter 29 says the rod of correction imparts wisdom, but a child left to himself disgraces his mother. The discipline your son and he will give you peace and he will bring delight to your soul. Discipline is necessary. So here, us, you know, this godly discipline, we're disciplining in the right way. We're disciplining out of love. We're disciplining the way God has called discipline and God gives us an action example. So we're going to try to give you three truths real fast on discipline real fast, that we can take, understand, accepting God's discipline in our life, how he works, and then how we can take that in, in our lives. And for those of you um, that have those under your authority, under your leadership that you might have to discipline at times, how you can do so in a godly way. First is simply this, God expects first and cheerful obedience. He expects first and cheerful obedience. We say this all the time. You know, delayed obedience is still disobedience. All right. First time. All right. God expects first time and cheerful obedience. He expects that from us. And, 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 and so, so, so he's laying out an example like, hey, when he calls us to do something the first time, he wants us now. God gives us second chances, third chances, four chances. But in those processes, there's consequences that often relate to those things. God is expecting, he wants first time and cheerful obedience from us. Uh, and, and so we see some, some of these uh, principles throughout the scriptures. And in Colossians chapter 3 verse 20, it says, Children, obey your parents and everything for this pleases the Lord. Okay, so again, this is talking to your mom and dad, and you know you got kids in your house. You're gonna probably, hey, listen to this. Look what, listen to what pastor's saying. Children, obey your parents and everything. So, okay, guys, listen to your mom and dad. Okay, but okay, no one's off the hook here. Mom and dads. Okay, this is talking to you too because we are the children of God. When we are followers of Jesus, right? We're children of God. He's talking to us. Children, obey your parents. Obey your parent, obey God and everything. This brings pleasure. To, this pleases the Lord. All right, so let's be obedient first in time and, 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 and be doing so cheerfully about it. You know, because there's, there's, you know, some, some, some things, you know, you've asked your kids to do and they're like, all right, I'm going to do it. I don't want to, but I'm going to do it because you told me to. And uh, I, I, you know, and listen, God, 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 God is looking, you know, really at, at, at our, 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 our hearts and, and, our, and our attitude on this. All right. So let's do so cheerfully and, and, and understanding it's actually a blessing to do what's, you know, and be obedient and the blessings that we receive from that. All right. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 says, do everything without complaining or arguing. So let's, let's, let's have this, this, this change in our attitude. Because listen, discipline is more about our attitude than our actions. Okay. Again, it's more about our attitude than our actions, and and so 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 we might go through the motions, but our heart's not there. It's, it's truly about our hearts, about our attitude, our motivation, why we're doing what we're doing. All right. So so understand that God expects first time and cheerful obedience. They understand that God doesn't discipline out of anger. So you need to hear this today because you're you're feeling like, why is God mad at me? Why is He allowing this happen to me? What did I do wrong? He's not disciplining you out of anger. God doesn't work that way. Because if that's how God worked, none of us would be here, right? He would snap. We would be all be gone because we've all done things, I'm sure, that brought, you know, anger to God. Like, why are you continually not listening to me? Why are you continuing to do that sin? Why are you, you know, and so, so God doesn't discipline out of anger. So if you are going through something in your life and you believe it's a form of discipline, and it could be, but understanding it's not because God's mad at you. He's mad about you, right? There's, there's a difference there. You know, he loves Loves you. He wants you to do what's, what's right. He, he knows what that can bring in your life. So God doesn't discipline of anger, neither should we. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 says, And your anger do not sin. And your anger do not sin. Now there's, there's righteous anger. Jesus had righteous anger and he's turning the tables over in the temple. That's righteous anger. But Jesus was without sin. There, you can get angry for the right things, but don't react out of anger in the wrong things. All right, this is the difference. I've talked about this all the time. Response versus reaction. Response versus reaction. Okay, reaction is quick, on, on, you know, tempered and like, oh, let's go. And you, you react. All right, response typically is thinking things through and, and, and doing it in the right way. And God always responds to us. If he is disciplining us, he's doing so our response, not reaction. And again, Great example for those learning to discipline your kids or whatever. Learn to discipline your kids out of response versus reaction. This is a quick thing that we do, all right? If we have to discipline one of our children, 
Typically, we'll ask them to go to their room and we give them a few minutes. And the reason we're giving them a few minutes is because we're giving ourselves a few minutes, you know, because it helps us to kind of think things through and, and at times, you know, pray, okay, God, how, how do you want me to respond in this? And go in there and able to discipline, but do it in a godly way because I'm not reacting to the situation. I'm responding to my children and love to correct them so they can live the best life possible, right? And so response, first reaction is so important in our lives. And so God doesn't discipline out anger, neither should we. And then God will discipline promptly with instruction and reconciliation. All right, so when God disciplines, he, discipline, he does so promptly and he does so with instruction. So he doesn't just discipline and, and say, now figure it out what you did wrong. He comes in with instruction and reconciliation. He wants to restore that relationship that's been broken. So whatever that might be, he wants to bring restoration in your life. All right, and so, so, so understand when God disciplines, he, he's doing so with instruction and reconciliation. And so we're learning, again, as, as a dad, I'm learning this. And when I have to discipline my kids, I come in and we go over, okay, you know why you're here? You know why dad has to discipline you? Or, you know, or my wife, or she's, you know, why does mom have to discipline you? And then we respond and then saying, okay, and so this is how we can avoid this in the future. And then, then we reconcile and it always ends that discipline action with a hug, with some love, some tears, probably on both sides typically, you know, and then, if it's something where one of my children did some harm to another, one of their other of their siblings or someone else, and then we provide a process where they reconcile to that and saying, okay, now what do you need to do next? And you typically, I'm sorry. And, and it's not just saying the words, we want them to be shown, right? And God does the same with us. He comes in promptly and with instruction and reconciliation. And so Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verse 4 says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, it says, bring them up in the training and instruction, instruction of the Lord. So we're doing, we're leading, okay? We're bringing them instruction of, 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 of Jesus, of the Lord, okay? Right? So we're doing so, leading by example, all right? And so we're disciplining love, how God disciplines us. God's looking to right the ship in our lives. He's, he, he wants to bring balance in your life, and he does so through correction. And, 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 and so, so he's doing this out of love. Correction is, is only seen, by the way, as judgment. Some of you are like, why is God being so judgmental? And so you've heard that maybe said, it's only seen as judgment to those who still love their sin. What? All right? Correction is only seen as judgmental, as judgment to those who are still in love with their sin. So if we're not open to the correction of God, it means it's because we're still in love with the sin that we're in. And we don't want that correction in our lives. And that's a big one. And, and that's a, ooh, touching on some on some sore subjects here. But in my, in my own life, when, when God's correcting me, when I don't want to hear it because I know I'm in the wrong, I'm still in love with my sin. I'm not willing to let go of that sin. And so so when we're not open to God's correction and we think, God, you know, stop judging me and, you know, and whatever, it's because we're still in love with our sin. So are you still in love with your sin today? Are you willing to pray for God so he can right the ship in your life to bring you balance? to experience the joy and peace that can only come from Him, right? Let's, let's lean into God today and grow closer in relationship and be open to His discipline because when He disciplines us, it's, the motivation is out of love for us so we can experience the blessings that only can come from God Himself. It truly is an act of love for us. So let's learn to right the ship today. Come on, guys, let's right the ship. Let's bring balance in our lives. And that balance comes through God himself. Let's pray. God, thank you for all you do for us, Lord. Thank you for everyone who's watching today. I pray that we can right the ship, Lord, in our lives, Lord, and be open to correction and the discipline at times in our lives, Lord, and receive that be able to just be first time and cheerful, obedient when you call us out, Lord, and be able to, to uh, seek that re reconciliation within our lives and to be restored, Lord, and Lord, to, 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 to turn away from the sin that we've fallen in love with. And Lord, just be open to you and to your love. 
thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for riding the ship in my life and constantly being there for me. And Lord, every time I start going off balance, Lord, thank you for, for, for being there and just getting that ship back to where it's supposed to be, my life where it needs to be. I pray I just open to you always, Lord. Lord, just anyone anyone's watching today, Lord, that has never accepted you as their Savior, that they're willing to say, God, it's all yours today. I receive Jesus into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I want you to correct, to right my ship today so I can experience your love like none other. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening today. Thank you for um, participating in the comment section. Thank you for uh, your generosity as a church. Hey, um, if you are ready to receive Jesus as your personal savior, I check out rechurch.tv slash follow Jesus. Again, rechurch.tv slash follow Jesus. All right, and, and just get get just get in there and you can see how you can personally accept Jesus. Let us know. We love to give you a free Bible. We love to walk along with you in this journey. And hey, next week is Bagel Fest. And so we're going to be out on the streets. Monticello, love for you. We need some more help. Go to reachup.tv slash bagel. Sign up to help. And uh, come out and enjoy the day as we serve and love on our community. And let's go. Let's be the church. Let's right the ship today. And let's just trust God with everything we've got. All right, guys. Have a great week. God bless. Thank you for joining us today. If you are new with us and said yes to Jesus today, Connect with us at rechurch.tv slash online. Let us know how we can pray for you at rechurch.tv slash prayer. And thank you for your continued generosity. We give out of the overflow of our heart. Giving is an act of worship that expresses our gratitude, faith, and love for others. You can give by texting GIVE to 845-209-1313 or online at rechurch.tv slash give. To keep us updated on what's happening here at Restoration, text rechurch to 84576 or visit us at rechurch.tv.